everybody to me here it is 9 30 on sunday night for you guys 9 30 in the morning for me on monday and uh obviously it's a little bit late so i'm going to keep this quick this isn't about education it's about observation and we're going into april fool's day don't take anything for granted thinking that because it's april 1st on friday that it's similar to April 20th for the marijuana stocks, that there's some symbolism. There's absolutely no symbolism whatsoever. It's an open day. It's a Friday. It's a trading day. The date has absolutely nothing to do with it. So don't get fooled. So anyway, I'm going to kind of go backwards into what's already going to be in the email. And what I've got on the screen here is the FTSE. I've got the FTSE, the weekly chart. And this is going back, showing you where the 2018 high is and how you've got this resistance level right here, right around 7670. We do have a couple of members that are from UK. As many of you know, Northman trader Sven Henrich, he lives in the UK. He's one of the main US traders, one of the main social media people that people follow. Um, he pointed something out, which I don't have the tweet here on the computer, but I'm going to show you in a minute. But anyway, here's the UK, here's the FTSE. And as you can see here, the FTSE is kind of topping itself out right up here on that resistance where it came back to at right prior to the, the war. Funny how those kind of things happen. The DAX is in a much different situation. And I just make sure I got the right one. DAX, D-A-B-I, because I've just found these recently. And the DAX, different, obviously. You came in here and you got your top in November, very similar to the NASDAQ because the DAX and the NASDAQ pretty much mimic each other. And just want to bring you here. This is an odd candle. doesn't really matter. February 24th, this gap down here, this is the invasion of Russia into the Ukraine. You had your gap down and you had your sell off and much worse over in Europe as compared to us in the US, because as you guys remember, February 24th, that was our bottom on the correction. That was when we bought them there at 4115. But here, obviously, much worse. Boom, got your bottom over here on March, where we bottomed recently, and we've had our run. And here you are right back up, right to the levels that you were prior to the invasion, just fractionally below that, and starting to make a curl to the downside. So again, one of those things that you need to be aware of. Since we're going to be here on Europe, I'm going to go ahead and cover what I was talking about here with Sven Henrich, and that's the VIX. I don't have this drawn here, but I will have it drawn once I get it up. Daily, let me go three years. I want to go weekly so that you can see the wider picture of what I'm looking at right here. Well, little bit too much uh, again here's your weekly on the VIX and as you can see here just coming over you've got one two three four five six six negative weekly candles the VIX is supposed to expire it's supposed to deteriorate it's supposed to decay it's supposed to go to zero and every few years it gets reversed it hasn't been reversed in a few years already and the volatility that we're in is going to continue but what i'll show you later on i'll draw it out and because somebody else drew it out and i saw it and i was like you know what i need to share that and you can see here this circular bottom that you've got smiley face and you can see across the top you've got kind of a smiley face working there i know it doesn't work with me moving the mouse around but it fits for this you may be able to see this, you may not be able to see this, but this is your data from Friday. I'll throw a screenshot into the email, right, on the VIX. And there were 474,000 calls bought and only 153,000 puts bought. Now, I don't go over and follow the options on the VIX daily. So the three to one ratio, can't tell you whether or not this is normal like over on SPY. SPY, it's normal to have one and a half puts to the calls. But somebody's got 12,000, it's a spread that this one is, 12,000 3250 calls. And I can bet you that if you go on the other side, they're offset by puts. But here's the big one. Somebody bought 7,600 June 130 calls. 
more importantly, somebody went absolutely batshit fucking crazy around 2.40 in the afternoon, and they loaded the April 22, 27 calls on the VIX. These are absolutely loaded. I will go down and I will calculate and see how much this is, but I continue to see it showing up here. 190, 190, 190, 190. Big, huge block trades taking place at 2.20 in the afternoon on Friday. So, again, what I was trying to, you know, uh, show everyone and try and be a little bit, you know, clean about it is, hey, we're due a pullback. We didn't get one last week, which was the second time in 19 months that I've been following this that we didn't get a pullback during the week after OPEX. The last time it didn't happen was October 2020. <clears throat> Excuse me. October of 2021 just recently, which I think I can pull up here on the chart. And here is your October right there. How you just had this euphoric, no dip, 10% rally up until we went into November. And then we had a baby dip and then we went into Thanksgiving. And this again was the beginnings of the final wave five of major three that many of you remember. And here you are right up there at your September top. And we're here again, right over here at our September top. Bang, bang, bang. Here's your February double top where they trapped everybody getting long. And here's your breaks right here where they were trapping everybody getting short. Back in November and again back here in the beginning of December. So 4545, it continues to be your number one spot, continues to be your number one focus when you come down on all of it. And, you know, Again, here you are. You can really see it and illustrate it that we are due a pullback. And the pullback that we're due, in my opinion, still remains to be the same. It is somewhere in here uh, in this 4425, 4385 level. And suddenly, everybody that was bullish last week is now starting to quote the exact same pivots somewhere in that 4425. 4385 area is where we should dip down to as long as we don't break down below 4350 it's considered to be that we are okay into a bull market but again i want to make sure that everyone understands this is major five this is not major three major three is viagra on ecstasy with 17 shots of testosterone and four cases of red bull you go up even if you're asleep you're still going up. Major five is completely different. Major five is really choppy, really weak. No big institutional money is behind it. Everything that's institutional is in there for the scalp. And you're really stretching yourself to think that the kind of rallies that you got during major three are going to continue to be there in major five, which was why I shared the chart back in January we're going to get our bounce. We're going to go up in there into the February FOMC. We failed. Only got up to that 4560 earlier in the month. We're going to drop down to the FOMC meeting in March. We failed. We dropped the week prior to that. And then we're going to start heading upwards. And like I said, when I was illustrating it in January and February, we're going to be heading upwards at a much slighter angle. And what I can show... Again, I tried to show during the other videos from the last few weeks. Uh, 1999 is this the same exact situation, the same exact scenario that I've been talking about here. And, you know, it's here. You got your major five. Dot com high. Bang. 15% drop over 20 or 20, 20 sessions or something like that. And then you got your grind to the upside never took out your all-time highs, right? You never took out your all-time highs. You came up here from March or April up into August, and all you could do was grind up into that area. Very similar situation that I'm going to be looking for now. Here, five years, you can pull up your major five from over here in 2018. Here's your major three. Here's your drop. And this was in 
the big primary three. Major three top January had your quick drop 11%. And then you took the entire summer all the way up until August to get up above that January high. And then only fractionally when we got right to our number, that 29, 30, 94, bang, 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 couple of hits on there and boom, you got your 20% drop. So it's not, I've seen comments that, yeah, I want to get up above this level so I can start holding stuff overnight. No, this is, this is small. This is really where it comes into the point where spreads are your friend. Trading the spreads, selling credit, these are your best friend. Buying and selling calls is a much more difficult process when you're into this major five area as it was compared to major three. Major three, simple, easy peasy, patterns work, trends work, support lines work. Major five, all they're doing here during major five is trying to bag as many people as they possibly can. And that's exactly what they do every single time that you get a major five going back in history, going back all the way to 1933. So relax, enjoy yourselves. Spreads are your friend. Please message me, PM me, do a one-on-one call with me. I've had guys that are now switching over from doing regular puts and calls and now starting to do spreads and they absolutely love them. You know exactly what your profit's going to be prior to the trade. So there's no guessing saying, why do I need to hold on to this trade? Can I get a little bit more out of it? You know what your profit's going to be already. You know exactly where your break even's going to be. Message me. Come on, let's get on this. One last thing I'm going to point out here. One last thing, and I'm sorry for taking so long. I apologize. I just finished a half a gallon of coffee, 930 in the morning over here, is this. And it is a big, major concern. This is inside of big major three for oil. You had your big one, you had your big two, then we had this 109% run right here from December up until the other week. 109%, we just dropped 28%, 40 points, to make what should be, should be wave four. You can still see your support line right here. I've got a chart that I'll put in there in the uh, email. And what this should get up to is somewhere up here around 145 to 155. That's where it should be heading to. As long as it doesn't break down below this 94, it has the ability to get up there to that 90, that 145, 155 area, which will, again, I apologize. It has taken a little longer than expected, but I want to point this out. We're going to get SPX options. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays are going to begin in the middle of April. Thursdays are going to begin in the middle of May. So you're going to be able to trade the SPX every single day of the week, Monday through Friday. March 25 recap. Again, recommend you go back to the email. You'll see we went exactly to where I said we were going to go. March 18th. Again, go back through the email. Didn't see that OPEX coming. Didn't see that massive once in a lifetime since I was six years old rally that happened on that Friday, but it happened. March 11th, again, go back through it. You'll see exactly what we were talking about took place. This is what I want to point out to show to, to shut everything down. Russia invaded Ukraine on the 24th of February. On the 24th of February is when we got our bottom there in February on the SPX. This is your crops, okay? Belarus, you got barley, rapeseed. Moldova, rapeseed, sunflower seeds. But in Ukraine, you got barley, corn, millet, rapeseed, soybean, sunflower seed, and wheat. I've shown before, if you guys remember, 35% of the world's wheat comes from the Ukraine and Russia combined. An equal portion of around 35 to 40 percent comes from the U.S. and Canada. I was talking about it earlier in the week or, or late last week, how the U.S. actually pays farmers not to plant so that that way they can control the prices of crops. It, it, it's been done for decades. They pay farmers not to grow. And that way they still get paid what would normally be what would be out there on their on their crops. But at the same time, the crops aren't there on the market so they can balance the pricing. 
Now you're completely screwed because the entire crop season for wheat in the Ukraine has been abolished. They've already announced that a week ago. Russia, you got sanctions, you got imports, you got embargoes. So you got 35% of the world's wheat basically disappeared. I'm going to show you something really interesting here in a minute, but I want to point this out as well. We're, we've got this ridiculous inflation going on in the U.S., right? And now you have the housing bubble starting to burst because interest rates are going up. Mortgage rates broke 4% on Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and people just simply don't have the liquidity that they had going back six months ago, nine months ago. Michigan consumer sentiment hit to five-year lows on Friday when they reported that. You've got... Uh, Inflation, where if you remember the inflation reports that were coming out all last year as we were starting to climb into this transitory inflation, all of it was coming off of the used cars. Everybody remembers used car prices were going absolutely berserk. Well, you can throw that out the window with $6 gas. That That's null and void. Now, food has now replaced cars, and food is going to be fucking absolutely legit. When you add in COVID, where Shanghai just locked down their entire city or on y yesterday, public transport completely closed in Shanghai. They're going to test every single person in the city over the course of the next two weeks. So you put in COVID and you put in this food crisis that we're about to have, where people in America could be doing what was in Ethiopia 25 years ago. We're, we're really in a crisis here that could be brewing which fits into the stock market scenario where we've just finished major four, we're into major five, and sometime as we go into the next six to nine months, that major five should top out, and then we're in for an absolute shitstorm, which is going to drop drop us down to COVID levels, 2016 levels, and I think we could even hit the dot com 2008 highs down at 1500. Not now, but it's due. Here's the Ukraine map for, for where it is, okay? And these darker green areas are where you get most of the growth. The lighter green areas, you get a lot of the growth. Here is the recent invasion and Russian troops. And you can see how it's all here along this border. Obviously, it's the border because it's the border with Russia. You know, you've got it all over here along the border. And then you come over here and you see, holy shit, look at that. They're right over there, right into the wheat zone. They come over here into this area right here, which you've seen quite a bit. Kharkiv, you've seen videos of Kharkiv. Kharkiv is demolished. <laughs> Dinpro. Dinpro is where I think, my opinion, my opinion is where they would drop a nuke to create a wall. I don't think that they're going to do it, but I, I, I do have it in my brain that, you know, it, it's, it's possible somewhere in this area right here. But you look there, that's your wheat. And seriously, it's not about going out and buying a whole bunch of toilet paper, but I might not be around in two months. You might not be around in two months. So this is the kind of information that you kind of want to have and just put it in your back pocket and say, oh, yeah, I remember that when Tim said that. Think about it, consider it, and again, when you're trading right now, size is a matter, size matters. The ARC trade, it worked, but you had to be really quick on it. You had to be looking for that 30 40%. If you didn't, you got greedy, bang, didn't work. Twitter never worked. Now, with Elon Musk out there talking about how he's going to open up a new social media platform, and it's Monday, we're already having a little bit of a curl down on the futures. You watch Twitter open up and break down below that 36 level that I was looking for as we went into last week with that trade, all because Elon Musk is talking about opening a new Twitter platform or social media platform, and you start to realize this is all a video game, and all you need to do is have enough time left on your player, and you will always win. Anyway, guys, have a good day. I apologize for taking too long, taking too much of your time. I'll see you guys in the chat room.